into today's video. You are in for a treat today. I'm so excited about this video. I think this is one of the most fun videos I've made in a while and I just had so much fun filming it so I hope you enjoy it. Recently with lockdown and everything I feel like I've seen so many people turning to like new hobbies like baking and jigsaws, learning a new language, lots of things. Something I've seen literally so many people try is kind of like upcycling clothes and like doing DIYs on their clothes and stuff. I've been doing this kind of thing for a while. Like I remember me and my friends used to do tie dye in like 2014, the last time that it was cool. And it was just a fun hobby. And I don't know, I've always enjoyed this sort of thing. I definitely have done this sort of things with clothes over the years, but I thought I would kind of make a video all about upcycling clothes. So I've taken a lot of inspiration from other people for this video. My friend Moya actually made a thrift flip video recently, which I really loved. I've seen so many like thrift flip upcycling sort of things on TikTok and Breast Dressed also makes amazing thrift flip videos. I don't know, I've seen a lot of this sort of thing, so this isn't like a, you know, original idea at all, but I'd like to think that some of the pieces are quite original. The most sustainable outfit you can wear is one that's already in your wardrobe. Upcycling is a great way to kind of, I don't know, like spruce up your wardrobe without actually buying any new clothes. It's also relatively like cheap. Most of these things were essentially free. In fact, I don't think I spent any money on this video. Like these were all just things I had around my house. Yeah, it's definitely a more sustainable way to kind of be on trend and like get some more trendy pieces. So yeah, I'm so excited to show you everything. I think everything went so well and I hope you enjoy the video. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is this little purple cardigan. Next up, we have this cute little cardigan. I actually really like this as it is. However, there are a few issues. I just feel like the buttons are a bit boring. I never find myself reaching for this. I think I'm just gonna add a few little details to make it a bit more fun. I have this pearl necklace. I'm gonna basically break apart. I've never worn it anyway, so we're all good there. Um, and use the white pearls as buttons. I feel like I've seen plenty of shops make tops like this and I think it looks really, really nice. I also kind of want to do something with the sleeves. For some reason, they're literally so long. Thinking of maybe shortening them a little, just because I prefer my sleeves to be a little bit more like that length. And then maybe adding some pearls, maybe adding like two pearls right there or something. So for this DIY, you'll need some thread, a needle and the pearls. So I started by just taking all the pearls off the necklace and unbuttoning the cardigan. Then I started taking off all of the buttons. Just be careful not to obviously cut any of the actual cardigan. Um, and then I'm just threading a needle ready to start sewing on the new pearls. So I decided to kind of go back and forth through the pearls with the thread to begin with before putting it into the jumper. So that's what I'm doing here. And I just feel like this helped the pearl to be like securely fastened a bit better. Then I'm just gonna go in through the thread of the cardigan and just going in and out until I feel like it's secure, making sure that you aren't doing it too tight to the point where the button won't go through the hole. So here is the buttons done and here I was just sort of testing out things to do with the sleeve so I just rolled it to where I want it and was testing positionings for the pearl. I'm just gonna safety pin it in and then I added the pearls in the same way. So this is the finished cardigan. I literally am in love with this. This was relatively cute before we started the process but I think changing out the buttons really just made it interesting if we're being honest and a bit more unique. I know a lot of stores do sell cardigans like this but I just feel like it's a little bit more unique anyway. I styled the finished cardigan with this cute maxi skirt and my Nike Techno trainers. I didn't end up cutting off the fabric at the sleeves just because I feel like this way I can lengthen them again if I want to. In love with this, this is such a nice spring piece. It's really hot at the moment. It's actually like 27 degrees today in London, which is insane for the UK, but really love this piece. And I think I'll definitely be wearing this more in the future. The second thing is my favorite by far, it was definitely my most ambitious effort. I was really unsure if I was gonna make this work, but I've seen so many tops like this. I've actually got a couple tops like this and they just don't fit me right and they're not like perfect. Another great thing about upcycling is that you can kind of make things fit perfect to your body. Yeah, this was definitely ambitious considering I don't have a sewing machine, but I love how it came out, so 
we have the cutest little kind of like milkmaid top so this is the shirt that we're gonna be thrift flipping um so it's actually from jack wills pretty fancy i used to wear this to school like all the time in sick form we had to wear like suit clothes the reason i want to upcycle this is because the fabric is so so nice it's like a really nice linen material so my vision for this top is to kind of go a bit reformation on you um and i basically want to create one of those milkmaid style necklines i have loads of inspo for this concept here is to create a neckline that kind of starts here goes like that almost like in a little love heart shape and then we're gonna so then all of the collar and everything is going to be removed and then i'm going to have the sleeves to about here and i'm going to use elastic to cinch it in to create that kind of like milkmaid style that's the concept hopefully it works out <laughs> Okay, hey, so I'm working on the white top. It's gonna be complicated. This is definitely be the hardest one, I think. So right now I'm looking at it and I just like, can't envision it. So I'm gonna start with that. So I started out by just making some rough markings of where I wanted the top to go. And then I cut that out. This made it a lot easier to see what I was trying to do. So the next thing I worked on was removing the pocket. So I just used a needle to kind of pull out all the threads. This was kind of time consuming, but you can barely tell there was a pocket there now, so I think it was worth the time. So having tried it on, the actual shape isn't too bad. I just did this roughly, um, as you can see. But I'm going to basically cut a line here so that I can fold this part under and then like create the hem. So I think I want it to be at a slight angle, so it angles towards there. So I started by trimming the hem so it's exactly how I wanted it, and then folded it over like I was talking about before, and safety pinned it in place. This helps the sewing process be a lot easier and also stops you from making silly mistakes. Then I just started doing the sewing, so I just used a running stitch for basically everything in this video. Okay, so this is how the one seam that I've done is looking. So you can see it better now, yeah. Um, so obviously you can see the stitching, but I don't feel like there's any way really of avoiding that. But it doesn't look too bad. So the idea is that I then fold this piece under like that and then do the same thing. I obviously don't want this to be too off my shoulder or it won't stay up. So I make, make this one a little bit thinner. Um, but I've decided that what makes the most sense is to do one side and then replicate it on the other side once I know that it works. But this actually doesn't look too bad. So here I'm just trimming the back part of the top, which I didn't talk about very much, but I kind of just tried it on and looked for what I thought would make the most sense. And I'm just trimming it. And then I used the same exact method as on the front of the whole folding stitching situation. Then onto the sleeves, I'm doing that again, the folding over, pinning it in, and then I'm just gonna sew it all up. So here is a little update on the top sew shape and stitching and everything does not look too bad. However, now there's so much material missing, it's kind of like falling off the shoulders at both sides. So for example, if it's like where it should sit like that, but I just can't, I need to work out a way to like kind of eliminate some fabric here so that if it's like that, because if you don't do that, it's like, it's just, it's just falling everywhere. I've sewn all the way over to the back. So this side's all like hemmed. I actually think this doesn't look too bad considering my sewing skills are very bad. We have the issue of it falling off. So I was thinking maybe kind of like folding it so that it's a little bit like tight up and then you do get this weird kind of like poofy element but a lot of these tops actually have that on purpose so I feel like maybe that could be great. So what I'm literally doing is just taking the fabric like that and then folding it and then I'm just going to sew it like that but I'm going to pin it first so that it's in the right place. Onto the sleeves, I tried on the top and made a mark where I thought the sleeves should start and cut off the excess fabric. Make sure to leave plenty of extra just because you can't add it back. Here's the elastic I used. 
it's from an old bikini in true upcycling fashion so you need to measure it around your arm because that's the size it's going to be when it's on the top and then once i was sure about the length i just pinned it in to the top like this I made sure to leave lots of space underneath as you can see because I knew I wanted to fold that section back over the elastic. Here is how it looks and then I just went in with a needle and thread again and just sewed it in to the top. My general method was to pull the elastic taut um, or at least flat and then sew through it remembering that if you do it too taut it's obviously going to be really tight on your arm and that is how it turned out. Next, you need to fold in that excess fabric to make the sleeve look a lot more sleek. And then I just kind of sewed again to keep that in place. Hello everybody. So, <clears throat> from the boobs up, I'm so impressed with how this looks. What inevitably happens when you make a top with near to no plans and near to no skill is that you run into some issues. I have made a few mistakes with this piece, um, which I'll talk about at the end, but for right now, we're just gonna focus on the thing, the mistakes that are salvageable rather than the ones that are just long gone. Here is how it looks. I, last night I was just sitting watching TV and I decided to do the cropped part, like crop it, because essentially it's just the same as all the other things. I just cut to the length that I wanted, folded and then sewed the seam so that it's just like that. Obviously we've, we've made somehow, I managed to make it lopsided so one side of the top is longer than the other. I don't know how, that was definitely an error that could have been avoided. I don't know, so you can kind of see there, like that. And then because it's a shirt, obviously it kind of like flows out, which isn't really a vibe for this top and not something that I really thought would happen. I thought to be honest that this would just be the end point, it would just look like this and this issue would be a thing. But because it flows out like that, just looks kind of silly so my idea is to kind of like create a dot where it's like folded like that just so it's a little bit more fitted on either side i still want it to be loose but i just think that looks a lot better than like that and then we also have a gapey back <laughs> i don't know why that happened i guess because i'm trying to make a top which isn't fitted fitted so obviously there's like excess material in some places i'm gonna try and cut like a little triangle at the top so that cut that much out and then make a little fastening here so you can pull these bits together so that it is less JP. But other than those minor issues, I feel like this top is actually pretty cute and it's not like a complete fail yet. So I'm gonna work on that now. Hopefully we can make something work. So here I'm creating that dart like I was talking about. So I started by just folding it over and pinning it. Make sure you try it on so that it's definitely in the right place if you end up needing to do this as well. Then I'm using some scissors to start on that back section. This idea that I had didn't end up working out, but I thought I would include it anyway just to show you what I meant. Um, and then in the end, I just folded those pieces over and sewed them down to create just like a normal back because there was I couldn't work out any other way of fixing this. <laughs> this was probably the hardest part. These are obviously very trendy. I've seen one on Reformation, which I think is so nice. My everything. I wish you didn't have to literally take out a small mortgage to afford the clothes, but I'm so impressed with how well this turned out. This definitely has flaws. It's not the most robust item just because I hand sewed it, you know, so it's not really like perfect. I don't know if this would last in a washing machine. I'll probably hand wash this. I've turned into something that I actually really like and will actually wear. Yeah, this is such a cool piece and again, Something kind of trendy, I might not love this forever. At least I haven't bought it from a fast fashion brand. I styled my new white top with some Levi's shorts and Doc Martens. Next piece we have is this jumper. So this is another one of my ex sick form pieces. Um, I wore this like every day for two years. I've taken a lot of in inspiration from Pinterest for all of these. This one especially, I've seen a lot of cool outfits with like tennis skirts, plaid skirts, all of that sort of thing. A good one for me to do, especially since I've never worn this piece in the last two years.
And then we have this jumper. So this jumper is such high quality and it's really comfy. So I thought it'd be perfect. I actually don't think I've worn this once since leaving school. So we've got to do something about that. <laughs> I think this is fun because it has this kind of V neck, which is a bit more unique and it goes down like so. So I want to basically just crop this so I could wear it, for example, with a pair of jeans like this without it being so awkwardly long. I'm thinking about this length so that it kind of just just hits my jeans. I don't like things to be too cropped because I just know I won't wear them. So I know from watching best dress videos that you can't just snip a line, do some intricate sewing skills here. So the idea is that you fold like this and then you sew. So this part with the, the lining is still part of the top. So I started by putting in a safety pin to mark how cropped I wanted it to be and then folding the material so that that ribbed part is hitting the end of where the safety pin was. I've safety pinned that in properly and started sewing along. Um, I went through the sewing process a few times with this top just to make sure it was secure and matched the thread to the jumper so it was discreet. This is how it ended up turning out. This one, probably the quickest one, I think. Um, so just cropping it. I didn't actually cut out the extra material. I've just left it in there because you can't see it. And this way I can always reverse the process if I wanted a longer jumper again. Yeah, but this is definitely a lot more wearable now. I really like this and I'm glad that I kept this part rather than making just a hem out of this material because it goes really well with the end of the sleeves. So I feel like it just looks more cohesive and more like it was meant to to look like this. To complete the preppy look, I styled the jumper with a plaid skirt and some trainers. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this one. Again, this was just my handy dandy sewing, so I don't know how robust it is. I was having a look on eBay actually at sewing machines, but I'm not sure. I feel like it's a big investment and I don't know. We'll see, we'll see. If I feel like buying a sewing machine is like, who do I think I am? Like I'm obviously not a like, seamstress, so I really do like this jumper. So. Next one is probably the most trendy TikTok inspired. I've seen literally every single person on earth do a little bit of bleach tie dye, so I thought I'd give it a go. I've never actually done this. I've done regular tie-dye many a time. I've done that a few weeks ago as well. Bleach tie-dye was really different actually. Um, when I've tie-dyed things before, I have to kind of sit with like stirring the dye for like an hour. This literally changed colour within like seconds, which was great. <laughs> So I started out by getting an old kombucha bottle because I guess I'm trendy like that and I filled it with water and then I refilled it with bleach making sure to make a mixture of half bleach half water so I put on my gloves for the bleach section because bleach is a little bit scary and then I put it into an old spray bottle washed the top so it was nice and damp I used this random sort of like swirly method to put it into the shape. I just wanted something random and wasn't too bothered. I used these rubber bands from a rubber band ball my brother made when he was about eight. Um, I think I used about four and this is the design that I kind of ended up with. Then I went outside because the fumes from bleach can be kind of harmful. So I just used the spray bottle to spray every other section from the rubber bands and make sure to go onto the back as well. As you can see from this video, the colour changes really quickly. Literally seconds after, you can already see it lightening. This is how it looked straight after I finished and then I set a timer for about 5 minutes. rinsed the material to wash out with the bleach and here's the finished product. So I have this top, it's a big Guns N' Roses top I got from the men's section and I love this top, I just wear it to bed which is why I didn't really mind doing this because this this trend I really like but I don't feel like this is going to be in for the next like 10 years so I didn't want to do it to like my favourite top you know. The reason I really wanted to do it with this top is because all the design is kind of orange red tones. I thought that, that would look really cool with the fact that reverse tie that it kind of does this orangey red tone sort of thing. So I really like how I really like how it turned out and I just wear this to bed. 
but to be honest it looks really nice so maybe i would wear it like on one of my i don't know daily walks or something yeah i really like it and i definitely recommend giving this a go if you have an old black or grey t-shirt because it's like the quickest thing ever and you probably already have bleach in your house so definitely definitely the most questionable so i've seen a lot of people on tiktok do the whole one leg white one leg blue jeans now i really think that's cool i really like the idea and the concept however i feel like something about the asymmetry really like throws me off and i just it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable i thought it'd be cool to do the front white and then the back blue that was my concept my idea i don't think i executed it perfectly this one of everything is probably the biggest fail but you guys can definitely learn from my mistakes with this one if you give any if you give any of these a go oh my god send me a picture i'd be so excited <laughs> i do think i would still wear them so pieces that I wanted to keep blue so that I wouldn't accidentally paint them with the bleach and then I used a bin liner and threaded that through the material to stop the bleach leaking through from the top layer of the jeans to the bottom which was my main concern with my design. Then I just used a paintbrush and the old bleach mixture to paint the jeans with the bleach. I would recommend being more generous than I was. You can here see the colour starting to lift and I also did the back pockets. There were some patchy areas which I went over and then once it was done, about 30 minutes later, I removed the tape, rinsed the jeans through and let them dry. This is how they look. So they're a lot lighter on the front and then I left the pockets blue and I really like how that looks. I did the belt loops bleached as well. I think that looks really cool. However, I think my tip would be to just use a bit more bleach than I did because I painted it all on, but as you can see, there were some dark patches. But for the most part, these came out really well, except the back. So I did the pockets lighter. They didn't take the color as well, but the issue was that some of the bleach had bled through to the back. So now we have some kind of like awkwardly placed patchy bits around my booty, which I'm not really <laughs> sure about that. However, I do feel like this is a great idea. The one leg white, one leg blue is definitely gonna be easier. If you like that, I would go for that because it's just, this was difficult because of the way the fabric like lies when you're doing it. I do think they're cute and they're unique. I've seen, again, I've seen lots of pictures of jeans like this on Pinterest and I do still really like them and I will probably wear them, but I just wish that I had executed it a bit better. I think I probably could go back in and maybe with some blue dye and fix it or maybe I could just dye the whole things like bleach the whole thing so they're just white but also I kind of went for a more light blue on the front rather than white white I could have left it for longer but I didn't want them to be white I felt like this would look cooler so I'm glad I tried it because I probably wouldn't really wear these jeans again anyway so that is everything i have for you today i really hope you enjoyed this video when i first started my channel i was doing so much more like fashion content and that sort of thing and i feel like i've over the time kind of like fallen away from it just because it takes a lot more time and whereas at uni and stuff i just i don't know i didn't really feel like i had the time for it like making this video has made me realize like that is like my favorite type of video to make so i hope you guys liked it i had so much fun making all these pieces and I don't know, this is the kind of thing that I love sharing because I feel like, because this is genuinely something I do in my free time, like all the time. Like even just a few weeks ago, I was tie dyeing, always like sewed my clothes a little bit to like adjust them and make them look like more fitted and stuff. I love making this video and I hope you guys liked it. I upload every Sunday, so if you're new and you lasted all the way to the end of the video, you should probably subscribe because that, that says a lot, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I love you all so much. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you next week. Bye! Thank you.